To placate Sanders, she did announce on Monday that he will get to name five of the 15 members of the committee that will craft the Democratic Party platform for the convention. Elaine Sanders also wants one more debate against Clinton in California, but a short time ago, her director of communications put out a statement saying that Clinton believes that her time is best spent uh, connecting directly with the voters of California and focusing on a very challenging general election fight. Oh, interesting. Well, Nancy, as you know, Sanders responded to his platform committee role with a one-sentence response, quote, we believe that we will have the representation on the platform drafting committee to create a democratic platform that reflects the views of millions of our supporters who want the party to address the needs of working families in this country and not just Wall Street, the drug companies, the fossil fuel industry, and other powerful special interests, end quote. So it sounds like, Nancy, he's not too satisfied with that offer. Right. He says he's pleased uh, that he has been granted uh, about a third of the members of the committee. Uh, and that is a big win for him because uh, the chair of the Democratic Party traditionally has the right to name all 15 people on the committee, but she has given him uh, five. Uh, but he said in a Q&A with reporters a short time ago uh, that he's going to make the most of it. He's going to push for universal health care on the platform. He's going to push for a tax on carbon emissions. He's going to push uh, for cracking down on the big banks. But he wanted to make it clear uh, that that's not the only thing that he's after is influence on the party platform. He wants, uh, he says, uh, to continue gunning for the nomination. And he still believes uh, that he would be a stronger candidate in the fall against Donald Trump than Hillary Clinton. Clinton would. Well, Nancy, Bill Clinton has been hitting Donald Trump with some even sharper attacks this weekend and on Monday. Here's what he said Monday in California. So when Mr. Trump says, I want to make America great again, what he really means is to all you people in the white working class who've been left out and left behind. Well, first of all, it wasn't so great the way it used to be if you were if you were Latino or African American or first generation immigrant or a woman in the workforce. Or if you were an LGBT person, it wasn't so great. Secondly, you can't make it the way it used to be. Uh, Bill Clinton came under fire for some of the attacks he leveled back in 2008. What is your assessment, Nancy, of the role that he's starting to take in this campaign? Um, he's starting to take on the role of attack dog against Donald Trump, which is a role that's a little less fraught than being an attack dog against Bernie Sanders. Uh, that was a much more delegate situation. The Clinton campaign uh, needs Bernie Sanders supporters uh, to, to come over to her side at the end of the day. Uh, these are voters who, uh, many of whom uh, liked Bill Clinton, possibly voted for him back in the 90s, but for a variety of reasons support uh, Bernie Sanders today and, and didn't take uh, too well to Donald to, to Bill Clinton going going after Sanders. It's a lot easier uh, to go after Donald Trump because he's saying things uh, that most people in the party agree with. And both he and Hillary Clinton for several months now have been kind of taking digs at the Trump slogan, make America great again. Uh, they believe that that is a weakness for him and that it will continue to be because uh, it raises the inevitable question of why America isn't great now. They feel that the, the slogan is somewhat unpatriotic uh, and that there's a lot of grist for the mill there. So it's not the first time uh, that Bill Clinton has gone after that slogan and it won't be the last. What about the Democratic Party leadership, Nancy? They're walking a fine line here between pushing back on Senator Sanders' uh, accusations and alienating his supporters. How are they handling that balance? Uh, they're trying to stay as quiet as possible. You saw Debbie Wasserman Schultz come out last week for about a day uh, and, and really argue that Bernie Sanders needed to speak out more forcefully when some of his supporters uh, created chaos at the Democratic convention in Nevada. Uh, but then she very quickly retreated and said, I've said what I've got to say about that, um, but now we're moving on. We're turning the page. Uh, they know that they can't prevent Sanders from saying what he's going to say uh, about Debbie Wasserman Schultz, about the leadership of the Democratic Party. They know that they can't prevent him uh, from going out and raising money for her primary opponent in Florida. And they know that there isn't that much to be gained 
from speaking out against it. So uh, they're holding their tongue, which uh, must be difficult for Wasserman Schultz in particular, who, who is now facing uh, a primary challenger who probably most people hadn't heard of a couple of weeks ago. But now they do because Bernie Sanders uh, is out there supporting him and raising money for him. The tension continues. All right. Nancy Cortez in Washington for us. Nancy, thank you. You're welcome, Elaine.